Hi, welcome to the Los Livos Wine Merchant and Cafe, where you not only get to taste California Central Coast wines, but you also get to meet the winemakers <laughs> today. I have Josh Clapper of Timber Winery. Josh, I'm gonna start off um, with the big question that we like to ask our featured winemakers. Okay. Um, if you can sum up an aspect of your personality in mm -hmm. one word mm -hmm. that gets infused into your wines, what would that word be? Um, well, I forget my mistakes very quickly. That's really important, but I think it would have to be tenacity. Um, I think that uh, you know, owning a small business, especially a small winery, um, is just um, a constant challenge. It takes a lot of love, but it takes that ability to yeah. just keep on going um, and be pig-headed about it and be like, mm -hmm. mm, this may not be a good idea, but we're going to see it through. And you know, fortunately, it's worked out so far. Well, I think tenacity is something everybody needs in everything, but definitely in yeah. making wines, that's a oh, yeah. attribute yeah. that will pay off well. Well, I'd like to um, go ahead and start tasting, you know, how your tenacity sure, um, sure. got infused into these wines. Um, but I normally, I was going to pour this, but I'm right, thinking right. instead of pouring it, Josh actually, before he was a winemaker, was a sommelier. Right, so. Okay. I can't pour for a sommelier since you are the expert. Right, right. Well, I'm certainly not. And do it and while I'm, you're you know. okay, while you're <laughs> while you're pouring this wine, um, tell our viewers what wine it is. Sell it to me. Why okay. why will I like this wine? Oh, what should man. I be expecting? Like, do the whole thing. I want to be sold on. I'm I'm sitting at the Los Cibos Cafe and I want to. I'm trying to figure out what wine to buy. Sell me on it. So. Um, Timber, Super Group, or super group. I, Timber, Timber, both are fine. We're going to okay. say Timber for this. Okay, Timber. Um, so uh, a Super Group um, is a band that's famous because the members were famous from other bands. Mm -hmm. So Timber or Timber, um, it's a musical term. So it's a sound of one's voice. Okay. And so as a winemaker, mm -hmm. I make wines from vineyards that other people source from. I don't own any vineyards, um, but my wines have a unique um, flavor, texture, voice. aromatic voice, right? So um, that's the timbre of my voice as a winemaker. I love that analogy. Um, that's a great analogy. Yeah, for and a so so um, with 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 timber, um, all of the wines have a musical theme mm. attached to them. And so you know, t music is kind of a universal language. Wine is kind of yeah. sometimes really complex to speak about, but everyone can talk about music. Mm -hmm. And you know, everyone has has a story or a song that speaks to them. Um, and so Supergroup is, uh, a Supergroup, as I said, is a band that's made up of people who are famous from other bands. Mm -hmm. And what the Supergroup is, is it's uh, a blend of amazing vineyards that are all great by themselves, um, but also harmonize really well together. So you have the Bienecito, Pres Pres Presquil, Presquil and River River Bench, yeah. all three of them in here. So wow. the, way I would, the way I would sell this to you, if I haven't already, just because the you know it's a it's a it's a fun story. Um, Lots of great pinots yeah, out there. I don't know. The, yeah, we're, these are we're the, saturated right. with great pinots. Oh, yeah, so course. why do I want this one? I mean, these are three amazing vineyards, mm -hmm. all in one bottle. So this is a Santa Maria Valley appellated wine. Okay. Um, and um, Santa Maria is a very famous AVA, American Viticultural Area. And uh, these three vineyards come from three unique parts of Santa Maria Valley. So we have the Northern Bench, which is uh, Bienecito represents, mm -hmm. uh, planted in 1973, one of the most famous vineyards in the world. The most vineyard designated vineyard in history, by the way. Then That's we have Presquil. Good, good information. Yeah, out right. There for wine then we, geeks. Yeah, more wines have said Bienecito on the label than any other vineyard in the world. Really? So even I places that you know. That. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's, it's, that's and awesome. that's right here in Santa Barbara County. Um, but okay, there's lots of wines that have uh, wine from that vineyard. Yeah. What makes this one special? So this one also then has Presquil, which is the Southern Hills. Mm -hmm. um, Presquil's kind of newer to the game. Mm -hmm. The vineyard was planted um, in the kind of 2008, 9, 10, somewhere around there. I can't remember exactly. Sorry, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Murphy. So would that um, be like <laughs> Lady Gaga and um, Vienna Cito would be like Mick like, Jagger or okay. something like All that. Right. Yeah, Rolling okay. Stones, I'm, right? I'm, you're, I'm getting um, there. Yeah, yeah. And then you I'm almost ready to take a sip. Right. 
right, right. And then, you know, we got to talk about it a lot more, a lot more. <laughs> and then you've got River Bench, which is kind of those, the eastern kind of uh, towards the riverbed. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have these you know, north, um, south, and east. And then if mm -hmm. you go further west, you're in the ocean. So we, we can't do that. But um, so you have all so like three blues, places. Or... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, you know, where, where River Bench comes in, also mm -hmm. a very old vineyard, but mm -hmm. it wasn't as well known because most of the fruit mm -hmm. was sold. They only formed a brand mm -hmm. in. I think 2003 or four, and so it's as old as Bienacito. It was planted also in 97. So who would that be? What band? Um, oh God, yeah, they would be like something underground and crazy. Someone who plays all the clubs and everyone knows them, and they're writing great music for everybody else. This is quite but, a yeah. That's that's River Bench for sure. So actually, the, here. but with those three wines, we make single vineyards. Mm -hmm. That's why they're a super group. Mm -hmm. And so Bienacito, we call lead vocals. We think mm -hmm. that as like a Mick Jaggery character. Someone mm -hmm. should get that phone, by the way. <laughs> um, then we've got. Uh, uh, press Keel, which we call um, the, uh, the headliner because mm -hmm. they're the show that everybody wants to mm -hmm. see, you know, mm -hmm. when they come to Santa Maria. And then River Bench is, um, uh, we call it the rhythm because it's the part of the song that gets ah. everybody moving, but but nobody really thinks about it. And, mm -hmm. and that's what River Bench has been for so many years, mm -hmm. this, this great... Um, uh, this great vineyard that's just flown under the radar, mm -hmm. you know. Um, All right, okay, so, I'm sold. Yeah, there I'm we sold. go, right? So I need a. And it's and it's a total steal too at two hundred dollars a bottle, right? No, not. <laughs> what? I not can't really, afford that. Really, no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Mm, so. That's beautiful. Yeah. I'm tasting strawberry, but it's very earthy too. Yeah, I think oh, that's it's beautiful. That's what um, kind of what Santa Maria is very famous for. So. In Santa Maria, we have this kind of unique um, um, kind of mm. flavor profile um, and aromatic profile. I just gotta like start yeah. like breaking right, breaking yeah. out my <laughs> probably don't want my tunes. Exactly, but. <laughs> yeah. But it's like it's that mixture in of the shallow, fruit and funk. You in know? the shell. So. No, it's, it's got more than that because it's not just Lady yeah. Gaga. <laughs> right, right, right. But that's oh, yeah. probably the one yeah. song I can sing. All <laughs> I appreciate. It. I, I think yeah. I can sing it. I will not be um, singing. So. <laughs> That, that is absolutely beautiful. Um, if you can, can you share a little bit with us about um, how you came to be from being a sommelier in right. Los Angeles to coming to the Santa Barbara wine or Santa Maria here in the Santa Maria Valley, yeah. making wine and what that transition was like and. Did you have like an aha moment that you said, right. you know what, I want to make my own wines here? How, how did that transition yeah. happen? I mean, I've had I've had many aha moments. I'm mm -hmm. one of those people that's prone to them. Mm -hmm. um, I get inspired um, I, fairly I easily. Actually, cheers. That is it's the best. <laughs> Two aha um, moments. Right, right. Um, <laughs> Acting on them is a different yeah, thing, though. So yeah. you actually acted on this one. So I, I, I was actually um, raised in New York City. Mm -hmm. I worked in restaurants there, and um, one of the first amazing wines. I mean, I, I tried. I've tried so many amazing wines, mm -hmm. but there was a wine that really just did it for me, and it was an old. Every winemaker yeah, has right. that wine. That should of be my, another question I ask everyone. So, What's your wine? Um, when I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. I was and working in a restaurant. And it's usually around yeah. 18, 19. <laughs> yeah. Too. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I one actually, one well, was 13, what's funny is I, I never drank bad wine mm -hmm. because, oh, I mean, well, when I was a kid, my dad drank kosher wine. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the worst kosher wine, so there's no Manischewitz mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, it was at least dry and, mm -hmm. like, you know, somewhat carefully made. One of my um, mom's greatest concerns when I went off to college was that she just pulled me aside and said, don't drink any wine that comes out of a box. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Although yeah. now that's cool. But. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, we don't, I never, never. So, okay. no. um, <laughs> so but, uh, yeah, right. But, um, but then when I was, uh, I started working in restaurants mm -hmm. and that was uh, at, at 18 and I was, that's when I was first really exposed to wine. Mm -hmm. And so, and I happened to be working in New York city at, at already at really great restaurants. Mm -hmm. I had some good friends who brought me into their place, um, a place that they were working. Mm -hmm. And so I started out with already like, you know, stuff that was selected by a mm -hmm. sommelier manager for mm -hmm. a wine program, you know, um, but when I was 19, I got to taste, um, a, um, uh, a bottle of 45 Latour mm -hmm. and, um, it was a wine, you know, I, it, it was a bottle that I just sold to the, 
to, to the customer. So that one for probably was seven, around seven thousand seven dollars a bottle. Seven thousand? Oh my god! <laughs> on the wine list. Wow. Um, and um, he was he was having a party, a private party for his company, and he was. Preparing. And this is around thirty dollars. Right? Yeah, this is thirty about thirty. So. Yeah. What, it, what could be the difference? I want to hear right. your story, but right. also please explain. What's the so, difference between 30, this is beautiful, you know, and 7,000? Uh, I mean, I'd say fame is on. a lot of it. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, history, uh, like anything else, you know, what makes, um, uh, yeah. Anyway. I mean, if it was maybe the last bottle of wine on earth. Right, right, right. I, I don't know. It, I mean, it, it could have been one of the last hundred bottles of that wine, though. Okay. That's the thing, you know, a, mm -hmm. a super famous wine. Mm -hmm. It was a post-World War II vintage mm -hmm. when there was no young men to go harvest the grapes mm -hmm. and, you know, very ripe okay. vintage and, you know, very special wine. It has a special story. From also, like, one of the most famous wineries. But, mm -hmm. at the you know, I tasted this wine at 19 and I realized that wine was something that mm -hmm. I would be spending my life, mm -hmm. you know, pursuing in some fashion. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward to 2005, I was working in LA at mm -hmm. a place called Sona. We had just gotten a grand award from Wine Spectator on the list. Um, it was a just unbelievable list, 3,000 labels. Wow. And I That's just had this desire to, I had multiple desires, many desires, mm -hmm. right? Um, but one desire was to know what it was, like how to make these things. Mm -hmm. um, I, as a kid, I liked Lego, you know, mm -hmm. I liked to build. and. So and and that passion continued. I, you know, mm -hmm. when I, when when I see something that somebody's done, and that's you were, great. How old were you when you? Uh, made twenty five. The, you were twenty five. Yeah. So you were. Yeah. Ambitious right. to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna yeah. be a winemaker. I was also finally graduating from college mm. at, at 26. I was looking for what was next. I don't mm. know. I didn't know that I wanted to be in restaurants. Mm. I love eating in them, mm. uh, but they're fairly stressful um, to work in. Yes. And um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I just I loved wine and I thought I would kind of take that leap and mm -hmm. so um, I called some um, a good friend um, Rick Morrison mm -hmm. he was the national sales manager for um, Coupe winery at the time mm -hmm. and um, Coupe was actually one of the first wines I was introduced to mm -hmm. at 19 I remember mm -hmm. one of my first wine seminars working in restaurants mm -hmm. um, we were bringing on Coupe Central Coast Syrah mm -hmm. by the glass and I it was one of the first wines I was like this wine is just delicious so a $7,000... Isn't that dollar, fun yeah. when you can yeah. look back at your life and you can connect the dots? Oh, yeah, so absolutely. At this point, I had this, you know, and it just left an impression absolutely. that could be yeah. left a, oh, a dot, a mark in course. your mind, that, and then you were able to connect them later. Yeah. And, and so um, while a $7,000 bottle of wine may convince a 19-year-old that wine is the thing that they should yes. be in, right. um, it's that, you know, first taste of a 20 or $25 mm -hmm. bottle where you're like, this is just... This is delicious. This mm. is not your parents' beverage. This right. is something that that you can get into too. I can do, yeah. Two two, um, <laughs> they can't two. see the two two I'm wearing, right? <laughs> no, no. Um, so. But um, uh, I I was always in love with Bob's wines, mm. and so I you know I knew that Santa Barbara was a quick drive. Mm -hmm. I'd never been to wine country up here. Or I, I, I came actually you know for mm. for a brief trip to mm. see it and I fell in love with wine country obviously mm. and so I called Rick and he called Bob and I spoke to Bob and um, you know fortunately we had just put on like a crazy vertical of Bob Syrah on the mm. list um, it was like a 10 vintage ver vertical of Hillside mm. Estate um, which is unbelievable wine and um, and I said hey well you think Bob will be willing mm. to like do some blends or you mm. know talk to me about this and he was like, yeah, of course. And so I went up a couple weeks later. That's um, what I you know, love like, about this area. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just, you know, Bob Lindquist, Jim Clendenin, and, you know, uh, um, all these pioneer winemakers have just taken people under their wings yeah. and got them started. Yeah. So did you start? He, he just so, started yeah, so blending. So in 2005, I I did a couple blends. Uh -huh. um, I bought a little fruit. Um, but you were still working as a sommelier. I was still working as a sommelier. Okay. And then in 2006, mm -hmm. um, I took a sabbatical from the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Did my first harvest. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, ended up doing three harvests mm -hmm. after that with them. Um, I I had already started my brand, so I started mm -hmm. making my wines at their winery under their tutelage. Mm -hmm. um, and um, by 2008, I had figured out enough to kind of take over mm -hmm. the winemaking myself without mm -hmm. asking too many questions. Mm -hmm. um, and it really is yeah. something. You can go to college for it. That is one right, way. You can right, get a degree. Yeah. Um, but I would say the majority of the winemakers here in the Santa Barbara County, Santa Maria, you know, the whole Central Coast have mm -hmm. been hands-on just right. learning from the ground up. Yeah, I think, I think in this area especially, there's a... Um, there's a huge amount of kind of 
uh, trial by doing mm -hmm. and learning from others. And um, how do you think as a whole, you know, if you're just seeing yourself as a piece of right. our one wine country, um, and there's definitely that thread throughout mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our whole wine region, how does that affect us? You know, I, as a sommelier, right. <laughs> sell our audience on yeah. why they need to I buy think, California Central Coast wines. I think, and of course, the yeah. Los Angeles Wine Merchant and Cafe, we have over 500 of them. <laughs> yeah. Wow. In fact, <laughs> I haven't said this yet, but our uh, uh, we're going to be featuring these three, your Riesling, um, Chardonnay, and this lovely Pinot Noir um, at 20% off. Throughout oh, cool. the whole month, we're going to have nice. a tasting flight. We're going to have them by the glass. And then on our website, winemerchantcafe.com, or come, you can just go shop.winemerchantcafe.com. You can stock up and save. But um, it's only going to be offered during June 2019. So stock up while you can because these are um, you have amazing wines. Thank but we you. do this every month except November and December. But um, you can come in and taste them, see which ones you really love, and um, take advantage of them. So. Yeah. Um, so Santa Barbara. So, yeah. So, usually so, I'm the so person keeping other on... people on track. I, or, I mean, usually <laughs> Sorry, people are keeping me on track, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so what I think is amazing about Santa Barbara is that um, it is still so not commercial. It's just, it's How really authentic. <laughs> it's it's yeah. like amazing. I, I mean, I, I wish, it fun to go I wish we're all better tasting. at business here, yeah. but we're all, you know, um, it's still a very... You um, have people doing a little bit of everything. Yeah, so everybody's yeah. Just There's, you know, you go to a place so, like Napa, mm -hmm. and you can't afford to make a mistake in Napa. Mm -hmm. Land is too expensive. Fruit is too expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, those uh, many, so many of the wineries are owned by multinational mm -hmm. corporations. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way in a place like Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you go and everything is owned by Chanel and Gucci, mm -hmm. you know, and it's because they're just luxury brands. Right. Um, and so many places are becoming that. But Santa Barbara, you know, for many reasons, it's a combination of just the kind of anti-business nature mm -hmm. of this county, um, which sometimes we hate and sometimes mm -hmm. we love because it keeps it so amazing and yeah. and quiet and wonderful. Um, but the truth is, it keeps the spirit of um, of uh, just ingenuity and mm -hmm. you know. If you want to do something interesting, you can try it here. Mm -hmm. You can do it in Santa Barbara. And I think our wines are so interesting and so wonderful, and especially also the climate. Um, you know, so we've yes. got we've got east-west valleys open to the ocean, mm -hmm. and what that means is, you know, kind of from east to west, you go from um, I can't tell which is east and west here. Let's pretend that this is the ocean, and this is, <laughs> you know, it's probably flipped around for the camera. Wait, actually, but, no, you're right. Yeah, as we go towards the ocean. Mm -hmm. Um, it gets goes from hot to cold, and then we've got south. We've also got ocean, so on two sides. And as we go over the mm -hmm. mountains, mm -hmm. you have you know goes from cool to warmer to cold again mm -hmm. to high altitude mm -hmm. to low into the valley, mm -hmm. then back up over hills and back down. So we have this crazy geology and and so many microclimates. We can do, we can um, do so many there's great hundreds lines, of varieties. Yeah. I, I don't know hundreds, but I'm sure there's over a hundred commercial mm -hmm. varieties mm -hmm. planted in Santa Barbara at current. Mm -hmm. Um, so varieties. And, and, and I've know. spoken with other people too. That's a wonderful thing, but then it also makes it a really difficult thing to market. Right, right, right. Because yeah. you're basically saying, we're so amazing, we do everything well. Right, right. <laughs> Which is kind of true. The truth is, <laughs> I could never afford to start a winery mm -hmm. in Napa Valley. Mm -hmm. In Santa Barbara, I was able to do it because of these, you know, because of the complexity. So how long have you, know? you been making wines now? Um, I've been You've making been... wine since 2015, so this is okay. 14 years. Yeah. Wow. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And I'm going to, I need a little bit more for our toast. My thank you. This has been extremely educational, <laughs> extremely entertaining. Yeah. And um, you make some beautiful wines. Thank and you. And we look forward to featuring them throughout the month. I have to make sure we look Cheers. in the eye. That's important. <laughs> yes. Cheers. And uh, <laughs> bye. Uh, wine Merchant Cafe, shop winemerchantcafe.com, and you can get these wines and enjoy them at home wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers.